Now, alchemy promises two things. It promises us enlightenment and extended life. Okay? Well, interestingly enough, there is a gland in your system which, if you know how to activate it, will enlighten you. It will send you through the center of this Taurus. And if you also know how to activate another part of this gland, <clears throat> it's been proven beyond any shadow of a doubt that you will have an extended life for a long time. And that gland is the, the jewel of the human being. It's the, the stone, the sacred stone of alchemy. Now, it's not to say there isn't an actual stone, but there's, 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 everything is, is correspondence. So there may be a philosopher's stone, or the sun may be a philosopher's stone, but inside your body you also have a philosopher's stone, and everybody has it. How many people know that they have a diamond in their body? How many? Raise your hands. Yeah. You all have a diamond in you. Your body made a diamond. And it's in your body right now. It's called your pineal gland. And it sits right here between your ears. Right here. And it looks like an eye. I've actually had one in my hand. And it looks like an eye. And it's looking up. It's an undeveloped eye. And you can open it. It has a little eyelid. It's really weird. And it looks like a, a pine cone, sort of. And if you cut it open and look, there's this little tiny piece of zirconium right in the center of it. A diamond that you made. It's in your body. And this diamond, all of you guys who know how to build radios know, that all of radios have a little diamond. And when you turn your tuner and your radio, you're turning the diamond. And as you turn, it's called a crystal radio. As you turn it, it you pick up all the frequencies. So you can turn your diamond and pick up different frequencies. And so when you go to sleep at night and you calm your body down, you activate your diamond. It's called your diamond body in Tibetan alchemy. And you dream. You travel up the tunnel that hooks you, and you come on you, and you go up, and uh, people are traveling up their own tunnels, and you're meeting each other, and you're talking, and having weird dreams, and, 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 and all of this. And the pineal gland excretes two chemicals. One is serotonin, and the other is melatonin. It's a Jewish couple, Sarah and Mel. And and, and Sarah is the enlightener, the goddess, the enlightener. And we know that serotonin is one atom away from dimethyltryptamine. Dimethyltryptamine is the most powerful hallucinogen in the world. It's in ayahuasca. It's in all of the uh, mushrooms, okay? And, 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 and only this is yours. You don't have to take it. It's in your body right now. You can activate it. And when you activate it, you can see the entire universe in front of you. Okay, you don't have to go to Peru or the Amazon, although you can if you want. <coughs> I've done it, but you don't need to. You have it in you. The reason that you have to take psychedelics in the Iron Age, by the way, uh, in order to achieve uh, some modicum of enlightenment like the pineal gland has is because the pineal gland is completely shut down during the Iron Age. For some reason, it just shuts down. Just like when you get old, it shuts down. When you get, after you get about 50 years old, your pineal gland begins to calcify, begins to lose its ability to produce serotonin and melatonin, and it causes you to age. Melatonin, really interesting chemical, causes you to reverse your aging. Now, you're not going to believe this, so I'm just going to tell you. You can get it on Amazon really skeptical of what I'm saying. Uh, it's called The Melatonin Miracle. It's written by two uh, uh, Princeton doctors. 
And what they did, and it's described in this book, this book's been buried, strangely. Uh, it came out about 20 years ago. <clears throat> they took, at Princeton, they took the pineal glands of old rats, and they took them out. And they inserted the pineal glands of young rats. And guess what happened to the old rats? They got younger. Double, triple, quadruple their lifespan. They took the old pineal glands and put them in young rats. Guess what happened? They died real soon. They aged rapidly. The pineal gland is shaped like a pine cone, hence its name. It has a spiral going this way and a spiral going this way, like a pine cone, right? It has double helix spiral because it's drawing up the energy from the earth and the energy from above and it's meeting right here, which is, by the way, why babies have a soft spot at the top of their head when they're born. That's the pineal gland still needs the energy coming through and until it's done forming, babies have to be born premature because the head's too big for the, for the cervix. I don't know if you guys know that, but the humans are the weirdest animal in the whole world, trust me. And there's so many weird things about here. Women are the weirdest animal. I'll take that back. The weirdest animal in the world is Women, human women, they are. They, they, they don't go into heat. They have a monthly. No other animal has this. No other animal has a baby that can't be taken care of for years. No other animal. We shouldn't even be here. There's something so weird about us that um, it's unexplainable. If you ever want to read a great book, read uh, Sex, Time, and Power by Leonard Schlein. Um, in which he shows that men are the, um, the wimpy second cousins of, of women and that women run everything, everything. And what they do is they make us think that we run everything so that we'll do all the work. And it's a brilliant uh, exegesis on sex and time and power and how women, by picking and choosing their mates, actually created us and who we are. So I have a, I have a whole lot of, after, after reading the book, I stopped having a lot of sympathy for, for my female friends because I realized they were in charge and I was doing all the work. And, and so here we have um, a famous alchemical symbol this is the alchemist, uh, and he's chopping the head open of an old man right where the pineal gland is, and then Athena, or this woman, this goddess, comes out. And what he's saying is, when you free your pineal gland, your inner power is revealed. And it's strange, because the inner power is not masculine, it's feminine. Because men actually can't create anything. It's women who create everything. Men create culture for women. But it's women who told men to create culture. Go build me a house. I want to have a nice house. And we do it. And we love it. And so when we understand the secret of the pineal gland, then we're going to be liberated. We're going to first understand what a terrible predicament we're in, and then we're going to have an extended lifespan, which is going to stop the, um, the freaky kind of life that we're living now where we're trying to get everything done at once because we're so afraid we're going to die. When we're liberated from this idea of death, no one can control us. That's really what they don't want. They don't want you to ever think that you're not going to die. That's why every show on TV, I don't watch TV. I got to the hotel last night, I was watching TV. Oh my God, turn that thing off. I almost had a nervous breakdown. I saw like 27 people brutally murdered in the first half hour, you know, just flipping around the channel. <laughs> so what in the world is going on here, you know? And, um, and we're in, in the Iron Age, we worship death because the men are in charge in the Iron Age. And uh, men 
uh, uninitiated men worship death. That's the problem with this world right now, is women have abrogated their responsibility and allowed male energy to run rampant across the earth, uninitiated, uncontrolled. And it doesn't matter if it's the gang in the neighborhood or the gang next door, okay? They're all males running around, destroying everything. And the reason that is, is because <clears throat> in the old days, um, this is my favorite subject. I don't want to get too far on it until later. But in the old days, all males, were t males when they reached puberty, there's female initiations too. But um, being a man, I'm really more concerned with male initiation and the lack of it today. Uh, say in Africa or in New Guinea or the Australians, they would take the male out, not related people, unrelated males who were trusted in the tribe, would take the male out into the wilderness and honestly spend three days scaring the living bejesus out of him. He'd sit in a stone, a stone circle of rocks and he was told that if he left the stone circle, he could never come back to the tribe. So he had to stay there in the stone circle. And they would probably feed him something that caused weird reactions. And they would scare him. They would make weird sounds and run around at night and just scare him. And he wouldn't be able to eat. There'd be no food, no water. And by the time this three or four day initiation was over, that kid was so glad to be alive, so glad to be back in his tribe, he never needed to test death again because he had been tested and he had survived. But in this country, this culture, if you tried to do that, you'd be arrested for one thing. <laughs> so don't do it because they will arrest you if you try to do this to some kid. You know, take him out in the woods and scare the hell out of him. You will get arrested, okay? So you can't even do it. So, but... But what this does is that if you don't do it, then for the rest of that male's life, starting at about 12, and you who have sons know from whence I speak, that kid does nothing but test death. It doesn't matter if it's motorcycles, playing chicken, joining the military, taking drugs, guns, gangs. That's all it is. It's men who are not do not understand death, want to show they're not afraid of death, when actually they're terrified of it, and that's why all this is happening, and, um, and, and, and they're going to initiate themselves, and that's what's going on. That's what gangs are. That's what the gang initiations are. They don't know what they're doing. They don't have any link to, to great historical periods and, and culture, but they still know. They still know that they have to initiate these kids so that they will be part of their group. And what happens is you form a bond with the, those that initiate you. So the military boot camp is initiation. That's what you're doing. You're initiating them. You're putting them through. They have to sit, you know, with live fire going over their head while they're crouched to the ground. If they raise their head one inch, they're dead. Okay? That's initiation. Not good initiation, but it's initiation. And so we don't do healthy initiations anymore. And this is going to lead to the end of this age. This, un, um, this, this male energy left to uh, just drive us all insane. And, and it will finally expend itself when they've all killed each other. Think about that. Unless we do something. Yeah. Oh, time to change the reel. Now we're at the end of the age. And it's this arrogance about it. Like, well, we don't, we don't need to know that. You know, everybody goes to college and they come out all pissy and arrogant and they don't know anything. And it's, it's, it's pathetic.